Hey guys, Ronating Reaper here, just back with a quick little review. So, I just got done watching Smile on the Blu ray. I really wanted to see this at the cinema, I didn't get the chance to. I'd had heard good things about it, and I heard it was like a really solid, like crowd pleasing horror film. So, you know, as you know, I'm down to the HMV sale recently and I picked it up for full price and you know give it a go but is it any good let's find out so the film follows Dr. Rose Cotter who's a therapist working at an emergency psychiatric unit at a hospital one day Rose experiences uh, something incredibly like bizarre and traumatic involving one of her patients and she soon you know discovers that the patient was cursed to do you know disturbing things by you know something paranormal and eventually Rose learns that you know this thing has got her as well, and over the course of a week, Rose has to try and you know, confront her quite troubled past if she has any chance of breaking the cycle and the curse. So, you know. <laughs> When you, know, you you hear a premise like this, you know, this is fairly familiar stuff for a horror film. And I'm, I'm not going to deny that it isn't, you know, obviously there are ideas and concepts here. You know, you've probably seen in countless other horror films. But that being said, it's the way that this film actually executes these ideas that is extremely effective and does help it to stand on its own. Uh, notable fact being that, you know, this is like, has its origins in a 10 minute short film that the director Parker Finn also made called Laura Hadn't Slept, which I actually watched right before watching the film because it's included on the special features. So I figured why not, I did the same thing with black phone so and yeah it was a solid short film you know it's got a good idea at the center of it and it's got good production values good acting it's well shot and some surprisingly strong visuals as well and but the thing with that short film was you know there's a a really interesting idea here about like mental health and dreams and nightmares and anxiety paranoia you know the whole shebang really that you know with a proper feature film you could do some really interesting exploration on these themes and that is what this film does that you know that helps it stand apart obviously there's probably countless other horror films that explore like mental health and like nightmares obviously there's horror films that have explored nightmares you know but, but we have a whole franchise about it <laughs> but but the film has you know things to say about mental health you know things to say about anxiety and of stress and of past trauma and wounds which you know have never quite healed And there's even a line that sort of solidifies what it's trying to say, which is the, essentially saying, you know, that even therapists, the people that, you know, that we go do to check up on our mental well-being, need to keep their own mental well-being in check. So the point is, you know, that we're, we're all sort of, you know, susceptible to our own mental health issues, even those who, you know, 
help us with ours. And it's all sold incredibly well by you know, some great acting. Like Susie Bacon, who, you know, <laughs> is the daughter of, yes, Kevin Bacon, is really good here. She perfectly conveys and sells Rose's you know, <laughs> ever-festering anxiety and cuts deep into those wounds from Rose's past trauma. It, it's a really good performance. And there are, de there are definitely really good performances around her, notably Jesse T. Usher, yep, A Train, as her fiance, Trevor. He's good, he's like, you know, sort of the level headed one, trying to be like a voice of reason in the Rose's increasing paranoia, and obviously, you know, and even he can't keep a level head all the time at some of the things he witnesses. And Jesse T. Usher does a really good job of of selling that. We've also got Kyle Gullner as Joel, a police officer, Rose knows. He was also recently in the new Scream film. You know, fairly briefly, admittedly. He's got more screen time here and, you know, and he is good. He's another sort of like, you know, not can't quite believe what's going on, but he's you know, trying his best to sort of reasonably go along with it for the sake of his friend. <laughs> also helps as well, you know, we've got some extremely strong visuals much like with the short film the cinematography is really really good but you know it's not just like you know most films of this type where you know the cinematography is like effective and does its job you know and does its job sort of like building tension and an eerie atmosphere there were actively multiple points and that's where i was thinking damn that actually looks like a really good creative stylish shot you've gone for there like, there's a lot of really cool camera tricks it uses, like rotating camera and some upside down shots, which like pan downwards. It's, it's really cool, and the, you know, the color palette and the color grading looks really, really good as well. Especially in the last act, particularly in the last 15, 20 minutes. With this quite dimly lit house with like a sort of red tinge sort of illuminating the place, it's, it's wonderful. It also helps as well, we've got some really, really striking imagery, like some striking gory images and some and some things in the final act that once you see might be difficult to unsee. It's incredibly, incredibly strong stuff. And and it's these visuals coupled with a surprisingly like bleak tone like i'd heard this was a crowd pleaser but this is like the single most like bleak and depressing crowd pleasing film you'll ever see it's incredible it, and anyway, it's, it's these visuals and its tone which which allow the you know which allow the scares and you know the disturbing gory stuff to Land incredibly well. You, you can see why it has got an 18 certificate here in the UK. You know, admittedly, it is a little reliant on jump scares, as most horror films these days are. But but it, for the most part, it uses it's like t like quite disturbing imagery to be scary for it, and does the heavy lifting there. Uh, obviously, the runtime is maybe kind of a thing I'd point like to point out as well. It's an hour fifty five minutes, you know, so it's, it's just pushing two hours. I feel like you could easily cut it down by about like five minutes, especially at the start, like because the pacing, you know, 
once the actual story gets into the flow of it, it's really good. And it's like essentially a, a ticking clock story. But I feel like, you know, with, you know, like a little bit of fat trimmed out, you could definitely get that sense of urgency, you know, just get it across even more. And it actually ends in a, on a quite unexpected note that I had not expecting it to go to but but it works extremely well given the tone of the film and it also leaves it weirdly open for a sequel I need to be curious for a sequel and yeah that is Smile I really enjoyed it it's a very effective horror film obviously got some issues in regards to you know it's yeah, kind of familiarity with genre tropes and maybe some slight pacing issues, but overall it's a very, very effective film and if you haven't seen it yet, definitely check it out. It's it's pretty damn good. I'm gonna give it a seven point five out of ten. So yeah, let me know down in the comments, have you seen Smile? What did you think of it? Have you seen the original short film and would you like to see a sequel based on where the ending left off? Let me know what down in the comments. Don't forget the thumbs up button if you enjoyed. Don't forget the subscribe button if you are new. And don't forget to turn on post notifications so you don't miss an upload. <laughs>